my name is uh, Ken Long. Uh, I happen to be the chairperson of the Adelaide Sustainable Building Network, um, ASBN for short. Next up, uh, we, it's, it's a he's a little bit of a cheat code, you see, because he doesn't have a specific building, but he's going to engage us on the ideas of going all electric in our homes. I'll just put a timer on here, give me a reminder. Um, yeah, so I'm taking a bit of a different tack. I'm not talking about a project in particular. Um, I suppose coming from a more of a tradie point of view, I thought I'd do when I got asked to do this talk, sort of I'd do a bit more of a talk on um, on I suppose the questions that come up with electrification, like what, what's involved, how do we do it? Um, you know, we get people come to us sort of design a home, hey, we want to go hot water heat pump, we want to do this, and then you start looking at plans and go, it's not gonna work. So obviously building electrification has become um, obviously, I'm, I'm a plumber and gas fitter by trade that only does gas disconnections. Um, <laughs> so, a bit of a, yeah, I've had a few runs with some of the uh, the gas hot water companies where I've had letters from their lawyers to not post pictures. But um, basically, what I'm interested in is building electrification um, as well as building comfort. So, um, go to the next slide, please. So, obviously, over the, over the last few years, so we go from you know, just building a home, all of a sudden we're having to think about all the um, electrical items that go in it. So we've got, you know, heat pumps for hot water, we've got HRV, we've got electric cars, we've got induction, we've got solar, we've got batteries. And it's become, I suppose, quite a, quite a minefield of so much information out there. Um, and then obviously clients coming along going, hey, we want to do these things. And then I suppose from designers and architects and builders' point of view is going, hey, well, how do we bring all that together to make it happen? Um, so what I suppose I did tonight is I sort of went through and go, right, what, what questions have people asked me? What, what, what information have I sent out? Um, just to sort of hit on a few of those, those points. Um, so I sort of, as you'll tell, I've, I've been playing with chat DVT a little bit and doing photos. <laughs> um, it's kind of fun. It's amazing when you put information and what you get out. So that's what I got when I wrote Design with Electrification in mind. Um, so sorry to all the architects out there. That's not what you look like, but anyway. Um, all right, so we'll start, we'll start with some basics. We'll see, we're electrifying, we're, we're building a home, we've got spatial requirements. Let's be honest, heat pumps aren't small, aircon units take up space, um, car chargers, where do you, you know, where do you put those? Um, you know, where are the cars gonna park? Then when we get sort of more airtight homes when we're introducing mechanical ventilation systems, where does the duct go? Um, if we're building airtight homes and we're putting air conditioning, if it's, if it's a bulkhead unit, um, or a ducted unit, where are the ducts going to run? So they're all the sort of things that we're finding um, we get questions on uh, in regards to building design. Uh, one thing we often get asked is with heat pumps is you build a house, you've got one space down the back garden, you want to put a heat pump in, can you still get to the back garden? And often the answer is no because there's no space on the block. So I thought a couple of quick questions we ask is for electrical requirements. Um, well, firstly, what's in the home? What, are they, what do they want to do? Um, what's, what, supplies, what, what size power supply is needed? How big is the solar system going to be? Will there even be a solar system? Now, is the orientation going to work? Is the build going to work? Are they going to go for a battery and then work on a time of use, you know, some of the IO energy or amber energy, and sort of shift their usage to be more of a, uh, you know, using their battery as opposed to having solar PV on site? Um, and a big one for me is, is there going to be anything that they're going to add in future? Um, yeah, are they going to add a pool in the future? Now, if they are, are you going to run the conduit down so there's a suitable power supply? Or once they build their house, you're going to do the pool, you don't realise you've got to cut up the concrete or something like that to get supply through. I'll go to the next one, Ken. Obviously, with, um, obviously, I'm a plumber by trade, so I look at the plumbing things, but um, obviously, hot water heat pumps, you know, traditionally a gas unit, you whack it on the wall, hey, it just goes there, happy days. We're all done, let's have one at each end of the house because the house is, you know, four miles long. Um, how how far is the distance to your points in your home? So where's it best to put it? Is it best to you know, put it central? Um, when you're designing a home, hot water's going to go there. Rearrange the bathroom to go. Let's bring all the wet areas closer together, so we're not sort of having to deal with how hey, you've got hot water at one end and hot water at the other. Um, big one in South Australia is gully for relief drains. We have to run for sewer with our relief drain off off our hot water services. Every other state they can put it on the ground, but in South Australia there's a little add-on to the NCC. That means we have to run it to a drain. Um, indoor, if you want to get indoors, you've got a safe tray under the, under the hot water. Um, so you need to put a point in for that. HRV systems, a drain for condensate. So when you're doing your, your first fix plumbing, make sure your plumbers put in a, a drain for future. And the same for aircon systems, which a lot of people run them outside, but do you have a drain for the condensate? 
Um, obviously, then we get questions about multi-residential. So there's a few things around that: centralised versus decentralised hot water. Is each individual part, apartment having its or building uh, uh, residence having its own hot water, or are we looking at going centralised plant? Um, same with heating and cooling systems. That can be obviously you can have you know your, your standard AC in, in um, places, or you can go for sort of like a you know a VRF or a water based like a geo system or something like that. Um, infrastructure for car charging is obviously a big one. If you're putting car parks in a multi-storey building, how many people are going to have electric vehicles? Um, how will the PV be set up? And again, I read home future upgrades. If there's allowances for stuff now for future, it makes it heaps easier when you come in the other track and makes it cost less. All right, we'll go to the next one, Ken. I thought I'd just give you a quick couple of quick photos from um, a few sort of you know, different installations. So you can see sort of retrofit top left. Uh, putting a, a what we call reclaimed heat pump, um, which is a split style system. We've got the tank and then the heat pump unit across and um, above the aircon unit. And then we've got um, you know, the, the setup with it on the tank with the heat pump on the ground. We've got an all in one heat pump. And then down below, we've got some commercial setups where we're using um, sort of smaller heat, two smaller heat pumps, or then any commercial sort of the larger um, setups. Uh, next one, please, Kevin. And then also another way we get a lot of questions around is obviously with H we do mechanical ventilation is HRV. So you, you're going airtight, you bring a mechanical ventilation in, what do you think about? So first you've got to think about if you're going centralised or decentralised, so either ducted through the whole house or just through the wall system. Um, if you're going to be ducting through the whole house, is where is your ducting going to run? Inside, generally inside the thermal envelope, so you'll see the top left, we've got the um, the you know the duct inside of the thermal envelope. Uh, HRV units. Um, a big one is when you seal up a home is if you're running a range hood, is where's that air going to come from for the make up air? So you're going to have to introduce a system where you've got um, you know make up air coming in because if you seal a home and you need a general range hood because of the airflow, it's going to create issues. Uh, and the other one is um, bathroom ventilation. So with HRV system, the ducted system, that takes care of bathroom extraction as well. So you don't need to have secondary fans. Um, and I'll go back to my first point is future proofing. Now, when you're designing, always ask people, is there potentially going to do some stuff in the future? Are they going to pull? Are they going to put a garage down the back? Uh, are they going to change their gas cooktop to induction? And if so, it's good to sort of allow for things or even put allowances in because it's cheaper to do it when you're first building um, than down the track. Cheers.